Since I'm sticking with Pikmin, what I bring today is a little video about the Pikmin 2 remaster. I was really thinking that there was too much Pikmin in such a short time, but even taking me 18 hours to reach the Olympic minimums to finish the game, there's still room in me for a lot more of this. Since you are here, why don't you subscribe to the channel for more gaming content just like this one. And a like, of course, do not forget to like this. Thanks a lot. Continuing what I started last week with Pikmin 1, at the start of Pikmin 2 we are surprised with a twist related to the first game in the series. The planet where Captain Olimar had previously crashed was hurt, and since he was crashed and could not work, his interplanetary transport company was forced to take out a loan from loan sharks and is now having problems paying it back. Of course, in these games there is always a safeguard, and the trinkets that Olimar brought back from his first trip are valued as treasure on his planet. Given the abundance of this rubbish he had seen on his previous visit, Olimar leaves with his companion Louis to bring back enough trinkets from her to pay off all the company's debts. The original Pikmin 2 was released in 2004, just 3 years after his predecessor, something that isn't very common these days, as such they share much of their DNA. As usual there are many quality of life changes and many additions that make the gameplay more dynamic and challenging, while also removing much of the time pressure with which the previous game burdened us making the experience much less stressful. The experience being less stressful does not imply being less challenging. One of the novelties in this game is the large investment in dungeons that are added to the puzzles on the surface, with the solving of the latter now being more focused on allowing us to access most of the first ones. There is still a great metroidvanian vocation in Pikmin 2, but this entry is not as focal in the game as in the first game, since although it is clear from the outset that there are areas that we will only be able to access later on, the game seems very more linear and progressive with the dungeons, since it is in these that we find the vast majority of the objects we need, so there is not exactly a moment when we need to deviate from our path to try to discover a new Pikminesque way that allow us to advance. This game seems much more complete with everything that has been added to it. One of the additions being the constant communication with the mothership, with although annoying when it explains the controls, is quite useful when it explains mechanics, some of which I didn't even notice in the first game, that explains absolutely nothing to us, which surely would have let me solve many more puzzles when I played it. Another funny addition is the two new forms of Pikmin that we cannot saw, we can only transform them in specific plants inside the dungeons, exchanging them for Pikmin of other colors and always in small quantities. Although you can repeat dungeons as many times as necessary just for that purpose, the annoyance that this entails leads to these two new species being much more protected and valid than all the others, given, of course, their rarity. There's even a third species that we catch for a special occasion, but it's not revealed until pretty much towards the end of the game. Graphically, there aren't any glaring changes to the first game, but in the sound department it feels like there's much more detail in the quiet moments, which are now busier to the ear depending on the levels, and there's many more sound cues that we can use when we find ourselves multitasking. Although I played alone, the game is set up to be played in co-op and there are many puzzles that work much better if solved that way, but I didn't feel restricted at all by playing alone. Enemies are much more creative and diverse, often requiring a more strategic approach to the way and order in which we approach them, if only to reposition them. 
I even died or left all my Pikmin to die in the dungeons, albeit out of impatience combined with plain dumbness. The challenge is practically all focused in these dungeons even if the puzzles there are not as complex as they seem to be in the previous game, but it was rare to me to be just guns blazing in any of them. Potions have also been added to the game. They can give energy to our Pikmin or momentarily paralyze our enemies. None of them are essential, but they save a lot of time at certain situations. Pikmin 1 and 2 are and are not the same game. The formula has been vastly refined in this second entry and considering that both games are at the same price in this remastered version, if you can only get one of them, this one has a lot more content to offer, even considering that they are both a lot of fun to play. See you next time guys, bye!